G Force. Let me get some music, bro. Bro, bro, bro in the ho, ho, ho. Hatch Virtual Makers Market. Here we go. My name is Santa Zeps. I'm here in beautiful Stockton, California. And we're here virtually because, you know, things are happening in the world and we were going to have this outside, but now we're in your homes. And today is all about shopping local. It's about supporting mom and pop shops. It's about small businesses, okay? I have elves. They make my toys with their hands. We don't use robots and machines. I like to hire the locals. That's what I do as Santa. I hire elves, okay? This hair is amazing, by the way. I use um, Pantene Pro-V and conditioner. So I want you guys to tune in, have a good time, and remember, boost, boost that beat, G-Force. I want you to remember this little message. Why would you shop at Target when you could support the artist? Why would you work at Target? Oh wait, cause they just pay you. I meant, why would you shop at Target? You could support local artists. Why would you shop at Target? You could support local artists. This is hip hop, listen as we just drop. Go to the local store and support your mom and pop shop. Word, you can buy stuff from a small business. You're like, oh my God, whoa, who is this? It's Santa, uh, I don't drink Fanta. No, I don't like soda, whoa. You can watch this whole festival until it's over. We got makers, art, crafts, musicians. Listen to the rhymes, cause you know we straight dripping, drip, drip, drop. Hip hop Santa from the North Pole. You should support small businesses cause they got soul, cause they got heart. And yeah, they make that art. Yo, this is how we have fun. This is how we start. Oh, Santa Zeps, baby. Cut the music, G-Force. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this beautiful backdrop, we are here at the Hatch Workshop. We're in their parking lot. And up next, we're going to go inside and take a small tour and see some of the stuff they provide for the community. Here we go. Howdy. Welcome to Hatch Workshop, Center for Emerging Makers. We're a nonprofit community-centered makerspace located right outside of downtown Stockton, and I'd love to give you a tour. Come on in. So welcome to the space. When we first get in, we find ourselves in the storefront gallery, where you can see examples of work that we've made here, as well as other individuals in the community. You can see things that we have for sale, as well as stuff that students and interns have made. We've got our community calendar there, so as well as a bathroom which is heated and cooled. <laughs> it makes all the difference. Moving back in a little bit, we have our bench room. This is community project space. So I've got a laser cutter here, as well as just general tools for assembly, gluing and sanding. We have this audio video production equipment, which is here for the beautiful day that we're making, this event for you all. As we move farther back, we have a wood shop all on one side and a metal shop all on the other. So this is where the main work starts to happen. We're able to make really nice stuff, large, large scale pieces with this really nice equipment. We're not gonna go through all the details of what we have in here. You just see me slowing down because it's so exciting, but all this equipment is really good stuff. And it's a benefit to all of us individual artists because we get to work together to have equipment that people wouldn't really, uh, would, it wouldn't make sense to have in your garage. But it makes a big difference. Coming through this way, we have our ceramic studio. This is where the magic really happens. So we get to play in here. We, uh, we make our own cups, trays, plates, we make our own molds and stencils. We make our own glazes. We do our own firings here. So it's really much, we really try to focus on the joy of the material and the craft and the experience of getting your hands dirty. I'm gonna show you in here. We've got private studios. We're not gonna go in now, but I'll let you take a quick peek. So we rent out sections of this space and give local artists 24 hour access so that they can start their own businesses or develop their own timelines whatever it is they want to do. So now we're making it to the outside lot where we can see the rest of our space and you really start to get a sense of the scope that Hatch Workshop can provide. Out here we host events, we do large scale fabrication work, as well as host letting people rent out space so that they could have the little artist shanties. You can see a big part of what we do is um, facilitating mural painting, street art, trying to focus on what the, uh, what the lines between all these disciplines are, trying to break them down. 
We have shipping containers and sheds that we have on the lot for storage, as well as that people can get dropped onto the lot to register a business license and have an annex. We're able to make things happen quickly, as opposed to being beholden to, you know, big needs, big demands, take six months to make a change. We could just do things. We could just make things. This is a space for artists and for activists. And as you can see here, art is for the people. That's one of the big messages that we try to carry around with us at Hatch Workshop, because too many people don't feel comfortable calling themselves artists, don't feel comfortable looking at what they make and claiming ownership of it, or alternatively look at things that are made and say, I could never do that. The value that a person can find in themselves when they make art cannot be matched anywhere else. This is the last part of our tour here. What we like to do is set up bands there in the middle so music gets all the way around the lot. And with that, we found ourselves back in the bench room. I'm going to deliver you now to our ceramic specialist, Jacqueline, and she's going to talk about some of her work, as well as some of the really fun things that can be made around here. So, thank you, and here's Jackie. Hello, I'm Jacqueline Bonson. I'm a ceramic studio specialist here at Hatch Workshop, so I fire all of the work that comes through our studios. Here we have a couple of um, pieces made by me and also by our interns and other workers. I could take a second and talk about the bisque molding <laughs> process here. So what we do is we take these cups that we 3D print, we design these in the computer, and then we print them out on our 3D printers. And then we're able to take a mold of that using some clay, like so. And then when we fire it once, it becomes uh, semi-hard. So we put them together, and then we literally put this in a Taco Bell cup. And then we smear a bunch of clay on the inside, and what you're left with looks a lot like this. And then we uh, glaze those, and we fire them again, and we end up with production quality goods that are made by the community. We teach our students, interns, myself, how to, how to use ceramics with this. So it's a really great way to get dirty, and also end up with a product that feels consistent, but also unique. Yeah, I work with a lot of textiles and found objects to create these um, high detail, high texture lace pieces. Um, I have all of these little trinket trays as long as, as well as these mugs. I do, I focus a lot on mold making and like found objects. So I made these little fried eggs. I focus on high detailed um, textured pieces and I make my own best stamps. And um, I use slab construction to create a lot of these pieces. Uh, you can find my work over with Good Stock Productions on occasion, but also at Starseed Ceramics on Etsy and Facebook. I make a bunch of the hatch goods over at Hatch Workshop. Um, I've made a few of these pins and other production style pieces. Um, so a big piece of what we yeah. like to do around here, because we have a wood shop, a metal shop, a ceramic studio, as well as digital fabrication equipment, is really cross-pollinate the different disciplines. So when Jackie is showing these little pins, this was constructed with a laser-cut stamp. You know, when we look at some of these other things, like uh, there's this piece, for example. This is made on our CNC router, and then there's a gentleman who has a shop attached to us. He paints lowriders, and he painted that for us. You know, what up? When I talk about the bisque molds like I did, and we have the 3D printers going into the clay, and then we're playing with all these different materials, it's really about trying to synthesize, you know, and create something new and exciting out of all these old familiar pieces. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. Thank you, Hatch, for showing us your workshop, the beautiful stuff you do for the community. Thank you for helping the kids. Sometimes they have to put their phone down, use their hands, build something. I like that very much. And now, a couple of gift ideas for you guys. Would you like some paintings, maybe a nice print, some beautiful artwork on your walls? That's a good idea. Maybe you want a nice vintage rock and roll concert t-shirt or a throwback Disney hat. I don't know. Vintage. It's a beautiful thing to buy for people. A very classy t-shirt, a funny little sweater. Well, guess what? Our next two artists, they have that for you. So we are going to talk to Daniel Villa and we are going to talk to Callie Just One from the Nine Shop. Stay tuned.
Hello, my name is Daniel V. I am a printmaker and a painter. I am living here in Stockton, California. I've been calling this place my home for the last 10 years. And I'm here today to show you a little bit of what I do. As I mentioned, I am a printmaker, uh, particularly doing line out cuts. I brought several examples right here of those and also most recently doing wood cuts. A couple weeks ago, um, I was had the honor to be brought over by the Speedball Art Materials team to join their professional artist network, which is a national network of printmakers and relief makers. So I'm really excited to be part of that and just doing a lot of printmaking. I'm also an oil painter. I started as a watercolorist and eventually just transitioned into oil painting. I brought some two examples right here about the oil paintings that I have done in the past. Most of my work does compose of people. Um, here are several examples. You'll see uh, the image of Virgin Mary, which was transformed a little bit into a personal piece for someone that they wanted to see what that personal struggle was. Um, I do like working with the themes that have to do with memento mori or just that memorial of, you know, we're only here for a short while. So just black and white, for me, it seems like that's appropriate. Um, like I said, pr uh, portrait making is something that it's always been there for me. And when I discovered printmaking earlier in the year when we started the quarantine, it was just an easy transition from painting into the printmaking process. For those that are not familiar with printmaking and think of printmaking of, don't you just click it on the computer? Well, the answer is it's just a little bit different. Printmaking involves having a piece of wood or a piece of lino, drawing your image, and then using a gouge or a sharp object to cut out negative space, inking that piece of material and then pulling one of these images. Um, one of the images that I have here is this lino cut of Edgar Allan Poe. And like I said, you're, part of the process is just to, this whole image was just a solid block and all this white space is the space that would be getting carved out out of the material, which eventually will just leave the negative and you print out and we pull paper. Usually with printmaking, the artist will make an addition of several copies. So each piece is an original piece that is pulled out. And due to the printmaking process, there will be variations on what those prints will look like. So every print that you see available either on my Instagram handle at DanielVillaArt or at DanielVillaArt.com is an original piece of art that you can share with you, with your loved ones. Just wanna remember and wanna share with everybody um, feel free to hit those links at the bottom. Um, thank you so much for having me here. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out on Instagram. See you around. Hey, what's up, guys? We're here. Good Stock TV. We're doing a little interview talk show style with my man, Cali Just One. What's up, Cali? Que pasa, papi? You know, aquí con mi amigos, Merry Crima. That's how my grandmother would say Merry Christmas with the Puerto Rican accent. Merry Crima. That's just how we say it. Si, um, yes. Uh, es un huero, pero yo entiendo. Oh, okay, okay. My Spanish is terrible. Okay. Um, he's one of the featured artists because part of art in Stockton is fashion. People love clothes. And in Stockton, we have an amazing vintage shop called The Nine. It's on the Miracle Mile. What's the address, Justin? It is 2018 Pacific Ave, Stockton, California, 95204. Okay. What's the Instagram, The Instagram Justin? is Stockton underscore nine, and we spell nine N, number nine, N-E. Boom. Okay. And with uh, these trying, unprecedented, challenging, difficult, unique times, where can they uh, shop online to see your guys' stuff? Um, we have the website, Stockton9.com. But then also, too, is they can follow the Instagram, Stock yes. 9 and then DM us if they see anything that we post on the page and we ship out internationally. There you go. International shipping. Also, I also noticed I'm a big fan of they they do live raffles. So they'll go Instagram live and people put bids and then they pin the highest bid. And it's, it's a beautiful, fun experience. Yeah. Every Friday night on the IG live, we do the nine at nine. 
The nine at nine. Nine at nine. nine, at nine. nine. So we do a lot of curated vintage pieces, hard okay. to find pieces, and we start them off at a dollar, and then we've got people from all over the world that follow and watch us. Yes, and I know my whole aura, my whole thing is hip hop, but they got stuff. They got rock and roll concert T-shirts. For kids, they got all kinds of Disney throwback, vintage Simba, Animaniacs, kind of stuff like that. They got, of course, they got Lakers, Dodgers, Bay, San Francisco Giants, Oakland A's, all that. But why I really love the nine, this kind of stuff. They got, can you show them a couple pieces? Yeah, for sure. 209 uh, vintage sports apparel. That is very hard to find. So this is a Mudville 9 jersey from 2000, 2001. Mm. It took me almost 20 years to bring all this stuff back from the previous owners and stuff like that. So I actually was able to acquire the whole team's jerseys, jackets, and hats at one point before this. That's where I got my hat from earlier, by the way, from this guy. Okay, that's Mudville 9. This was a uh, minor league sports team, right? Um, Baseball? Yeah, uh, we, we have the Stockton Ports. Now we got the Ports. Uh, one, uh, for one year, they switched over to the Mudville 9, okay. and then we went back to the Ports. Oh, okay. So, but we were also Mudville 9 back in the 80s, too. So. This is exclusive. Exclu this is exclusive. Yeah, Lou. You can't find those anywhere. Exclusifer. 101. Ooh, okay. What else we got? So also, too, is if you're from Stockton, you know that we have the University of Pacific. Yes. But a lot of people don't know is that Pacific also had a football team at one for point. For real? Yes. So I believe 95 was their last year. The stadium's tore down, so there's sure. not many memories. But there's one right there. Yeah. So one That's of the things that I highly curate is Stockton nostalgia and sports memorabilia. Yes. It's one of the things that I you know, go for the most. So I have a lot of Stockton ports, Pacific Tigers, Mudville 9, and okay. then you know whatever else I can get across. Uh, sure. High school teams. Oh, that's dope. Throwbacks. I like it. Is this your guys' logo on a t-shirt? Can I peep that real quick? Oh, yeah. This was a gift for you. This is, oh! uh, yeah, we got a, all right. Speaking of gifts, guys, remember shop online. Everybody was sure. showing you. It's the holiday season. So support, I got support. you one of the, the nine shirts. Thanks, these these ones glow in the dark. Ooh. Okay. I'll wear that when I go camping. Yeah. There's what? two of them. Gave you some options. Okay. There's the baby blue one and then the maroon one. All right. All right. What's this baseball jersey? Is that ports? Uh, yes. This is a well, not newer, but it's a fairly 2000. Stockton across the front. Gotcha. And then everything I go for is authentic, player used, you know, on right. the field. So you get the most for what you can get. Well, thank you for showcasing some of your clothes. I just dropped one on the floor. If it's, it's dirty good. and stained, that's my problem. I'm sorry. <laughs> right now I have to buy it. Check out their website. Check out their Instagram. Thank you, Cali Just One. And we're back out. to the show. Thank you. Pew. Hey, guys. And we're back. Just a reminder, we are at Hatch Workshop. You might hear a couple hammers slamming. Some buzz saws, various tools. There's trains, chickens, and roosters. It's a wild place. I love it. It's Stockton, baby. So I want to say thank you. Thank you to Daniel Villa. I say it like that. Is it Villa? I don't know. And Justin from The Nine. Kelly Just One. Thank you guys very much for showing us what you do. Remember, if you like what you see, go check out their websites. Go support them. Go buy something. And now, up next, a musical treat. That's right. William Sconce, Billy Boy, Bilbo, Billionaire. I'm just giving him a nickname. Silly Billy. I don't know what his name is. I do know. It's William Sconce. And he's going to play some music for us. I hope you like it. Enjoy. Hello, my name is William Sconce. I am from the band Dirty Pillows outside of Stockton, California. And I'm going to play a couple of our original songs for you guys. This first one is called Salt off of our album Prom Queen. I hope you enjoy it.
Thank you. Uh, I'm going to do one more for you guys. Why not? Um, this song is called Halloween 1978. I named this after the famous uh, John Carpenter movie, Halloween, from 1978. Uh, this song is about a man who sells his soul to the devil. It goes like this. shook hands and just like that the man could play he picked until his fingers bled he packed his bags and moved away but the devil went to all his shows he clapped his hands and stomped his feet saying we're almost home Thank you very much to Goodstock and Hatch for hosting this marvelous uh, event. I love you all to death. Hey, guys. We're back. We're here on the internet. What's up? I want to say thank you to William. That was an amazing performance. We appreciate you very much for stopping by. Guess what time it is, guys? It's raffle time. You're going to win some stuff. You're going to get something, a nice gift for you. Hey, yo, it's raffle time. I'm so happy, yeah, because someone on the internet is going to win some stuff. Boom! Also gonna have two more demos. That's right, whisked cookies and cakes. Say that five times fast. Impossible. Whisked cookies and cakes. Whisked. It's, it's very difficult, but it's a cute name. Like a whisk when she mixes it up. She's gonna do a cookie decoration demo. Make your cookies look beautiful. We also have planted love. That's right. Plants, botanicals, photosynthesis. She is going to do succulent ornaments and wreaths. Show you how to do that. Very festive for the holidays. Stay tuned. Here we go. Hi, I'm Gladys. I'm the owner of Whisk Cookies and Cakes. I am based out of Stockton, California. I have been decorating for as long as I can remember, but really started my business within the last few months. Um, and so today, I'm going to show you how to decorate some Christmas cookies so you can do them with your kids over the holidays. Here I have, first up is a snowflake and a snow-covered tree. 
So that for this, I use two different colors as well as two different consistencies. I have my flood icing, uh, which I also use to outline, so it's a little bit thicker than regular flood. And don't be afraid of the edges, as long as your icing is not too, uh, too loose, it should be fine to be able to hold its sh shape, but I do recommend at that point letting it sit for 10-15 minutes to help have it dry. So now that it's outlined, um, you can either let it dry or you can just go straight to flooding your cookie. You just could give it a little shake to get all the icing to settle once you're done flooding. Um, and then I kind of just go around the edges just to make sure that it got into the little crevices. And once it starts drying, I'd be careful not to touch it. Um, it's not forgiving after that. So you'll start seeing it to very easily just get cracks and things like that. So, so now that you have your base layer dry, we can decorate. So I have here white. I just drop and drag. And don't worry if it's not perfect, you can just easily fix that. And if you're a perfectionist, like sometimes I am, I will go in and just kind of make it, fix it here. It's a little bit more fluid. And I'll do that from corner to corner. I just touch the cookie and then lift the bag of icing and take it all the way across while giving it minimal pressure. You don't want to put too much pressure or then you'll have too much of it come out or not enough and then it breaks as you've seen me do. So now you, as for the snowflake, um, that was a re another flood consistency, but now I'm switching over to, you can do whatever design you want. So you can see this icing is not uh, is not like melting in it to, into itself. It holds its shape really well. And so you can do that with your icing just by adding um, more powdered sugar to it. So here is the finished product. You can now add either, I also have, this is called diamond dust and it is a specialty edible glitter. Um, you could order it online, um, but you won't be able to find it at Michael's or Target or anything like that. So just like to add a little bit, gives it that shimmer, um, a little bit thicker than the edible spray I showed earlier. That was, was a silver, dark silver diamond dust. And now I also have white diamond, diamond dust. So I just like to put, do a little bit of different colors to um, give it a little bit more dimension. So. Now you have a sparkly snowflake. The last, now the last cookie I'm showing is how to do a Christmas tree. I already prepared my icing is a lot thicker consistency um, so that it holds its shape. And so if you don't want to be flooding your cookie, it's, this is very easy, uh, but festive design. So I just touch the cookie, lift a little bit, and then bring it down. I kind of like to bring it into the first layer to kind of hide that. And there you have it. Now you have your green leaves on the tree. And now you just have to do the trunk. You do the same. I just flooded it. It's a very small area, or you could do the outline and then flood. And I bought these um, edible stars, and you can put that on there, or there's also um, different sprinkles. I want to make the tree like it got snowed on a little bit, so you could just add a little white to the edges. I just have uh, white sparkling sugar. You can either, especially if you your cookie's already dry, which I do recommend, um, you can just put it in the, ice, uh, the sanding sugar, but or just sprinkle it on top. And then I also have some little snowflakes. And there you have it, your snow-covered Christmas tree. Well, thank you for joining me and letting me show you how to decorate. My Instagram and Facebook is Whisk Cookies and Cake. There's no E in Whisk. 
And um, my website is also whizcookiesandcakes.square.site. Hi, I'm Monique, the creator of Planted Love Succulent Designs. We offer small succulent gardens, workshops, custom arrangements, and seasonal succulent designs. Today, I am going to show you how to make your own mini wreath ornament, very similar to the larger succulent wreath, but these can be used as display on your Christmas tree or to hang in a window or even on the outside of a gift bag. So the first thing you're gonna do is use a three inch metal ring, which I have already pre-attached a small amount of Spanish moss with a little bit of floral wire and hot glue. And then the next thing I did was added a little twine to the top for it to hang. And then I grabbed some succulents, small clippings from my garden. Before I attach them, I'm just gonna clean up the back a little bit here and use a little garden clipper to shorten the length. And then I'm going to use my chopstick, which is every botanical designer's best friend, and make a little hole where I would like my succulent to be placed. I like to check to see the placement first, if that's how I'd like it to be attached. I'm gonna turn it that way. And then you just use your hot glue to add a little to the base and attach it into your pre-created hole. Succulents are a fun thing to work with with small design vessels such as this little bit of moss or the small stones with the living succulent gardens in them because succulents survive off of very shallow root systems. So there's my first one. And I like the placement, so I'm gonna leave that there. And next I'm going to add my second one. I'm gonna clip off more of these succulent leaves, which you can throw back in a shady place of your garden and they will reproduce new succulent babies for you. And then decide where I'd like this to be placed. Make a little hole with my chopstick, add a little bit of my glue, and secure it into place. Sometimes they get a little uh, finicky and the leaves will pop off, so I like to also use my chopstick to help finesse it into position. And so we have our second placed succulent. Just gotta clean up some of the little webs. And then you could leave it like this if you wanted to, or you could add a little bit more, which I think I'm gonna add this last little hanging one. Because design elements are always nicer in sets of three, five odd numbers. So we'll make that little hole and then place it right here. And so I don't burn my fingertips, I'm gonna use my chopstick once again. You wanna twist it out so it doesn't stick to the glue. And then we have our little mini wreath ornament or gift tag. And to care for these, you just have to spray them with a little bit of water from a spray bottle, which I don't recommend doing while it's on your Christmas tree, but they would survive the season without being watered. If they survive after Christmas, I just recommend removing them and spraying them with a little water bottle. So it's that easy finding items from your local hobby store and your own garden. And if you didn't wanna make one for yourself, I have a few to offer before the holiday season, 
And I also offer custom 14-inch succulent wreaths, as well as small living crystal gardens. My favorite would probably be the rose quartz because it represents love, and self-love is something we all need, especially in 2020. You can find more information at my Instagram, which is planted.love, and then also on my Facebook account, Planted Love Succulent Designs. Hey, what's up, guys? We're back. I am a man of many hats, as you can tell. I want to say thank you to those two makers, Whisked. Thank you, Planted Love. Make sure to go in the chat. You can see a link to support them, to buy their stuff, to shop local. You like what you see? Give them a little bit of your love. Give them some of your money, some of your bucks, your cash, your fazuls, your shkarol. That's how we say it in Brooklyn. It's, it's, a, it's like a leafy green. That's how we say money. Support your local business. Also, I want to say, guess what time it is, guys? It's raffle time. It's raffle time. You can enter on the internet and win some stuff. It's raffle time. It's raffle time. Win a gift and then if you don't like it, gift it to someone else. Boom! All right, guys, we also have another special guest artist. Her name is Taya Overstreet. Very, very beautiful musical stylings from her. Remember to support all your local artists so that, you know, your painters, your makers, your DJs, your singers, your poets. It's all art, and we want to support the art. Stockton is a very artistic city, and I'm proud to be from here because of that. Taya Overstreet, take it away. I'd rather stay inside than be out tonight mm, Just sipping coffee with nothing to look forward to Savoring my solitude No one will ever know you the way I do mm, In high definition I'm dreaming of you with my disposition, I'm losing my cool. With my everything, I give everything to be with you. Oh, and I will try my best to let it subside. Oh, I'm letting go without taking any part of something where my heart truly wants And no one will ever see you the way my eyes do In high definition, I'm dreaming of you with my eye disposition Losing my cool yeah. With my everything I give anything To be with you What's up, guys? I hope you're enjoying the show. And this next song is an original. It's off my latest EP, and it's called Episodes. Don't 
wanna fight. Let's go for another drive. Does it matter where? Just some place to clear the air. The stars is easier than always being wrong. There's no signal here, so I can't recognize my fears. There's so many parts I keep in the dark. Don't know where to start. Always breaking hearts. I'm always in my thoughts. They scare me a lot. Emotion, I'll be in the toe in this polluted ocean. Everybody knows only the calm before the storm. Hope you never see one of my episodes. Wake up to a replay of a canceled show. I'm okay, but these days I push everyone away for my own sake, keeping my soul safe. Hope you never see one of my episodes. Wake up to a replay of a canceled show. I'm okay, but these days I push everyone away for my own sake, keeping my soul safe. Yeah. Yesterday I was in a good mood, had no time to fool you with a smile, natural high, something got me overnight, now I'm stuck in traffic in my mind, caught in the rear view, can't believe I hurt you again, can't get myself to answer your call, get my shit together and apologize, and I understand that this could be the last drop, but right now it's not with swallowing my pride. Never the same person today, and tomorrow is a different version. My character is a blur to me. I'll be right on target till you pull my trigger. Nothing could ever stop me till you pour me liquor. Convinced that the damage is on the cellular level, the poison in my veins. Only revealing my DNA, the grip you have in place. Got me flying off the handle, haven't been sober in days. Got me flying off the handle. And hope you never see one of my episodes. I hope you never see it. Wake up to a replay of a canceled show Cause I can never see it coming I'm okay but I push everyone away For my own sake Keeping my soul safe oh. Hope you never see one of my episodes Wake up to a replay of a canceled show I'm okay with these days I push everyone away for my own sake Keeping my soul safe Ooh-ah-ah ooh ah ah ooh ah Hey, what's up, guys? We're back. Hatch Virtual Makers Market. We're here on the internet. I mean, I'm here in person. This is not a hologram. I'm real. But we were going to have this big festive thing out here, and it was going to be socially distanced and masks and all that good stuff. But we had to, you know, take a break. Had to take a little break because of the thing that starts with the C. Christmas. What? Oh, you didn't see that coming. Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Three Kings Day. It's about the holidays. Spend some money. Shop local. Go in the chat. Click your link. Thank you for everyone. Thank you for everyone. I want to say that. For everyone watching. Thank you. Thank you for being here. This really means a lot to us. I'm kidding. Play some music, G-Force. All right, here we go. Yo. Here we go, 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 go online, maybe you can spend some dough as I flow. My name's Santa Zeps and I say ho ho ho, buy some gifts on the internet. You can feel so fresh. Oh, look at me, I'm wearing a green hoodie and a vest. Christmas colors right here, that is what I like to do. I wanna say to everybody, um, thank you, thank you, Taya and William for doing music 
that was so exclusive. Listen how we do this. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Gary G, for us for filming this. Listen to me, cause you know this is not written script. I made it up. Thank you, Amy. Good stock productions. We just having fun, bro. Let me tell you something. Thank you, Hatch. Thank you, Wiss. Thank you, Monique. Planted love in the spot. She taught you to make a wreath. There is trains in the back. So much noise, that's a fact. Doesn't matter, cause the show must go on. Yes, that's a fact. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. I wanna show you we electrify like Blanca. That Street Fighter. The train is so loud, I gotta go. It doesn't matter. Actually, that's a fire truck, bro. So much noise in the streets. Listen to this nice beat. Oh my God, like I said before, you know I'm so unique. Oh my, hey train, I'm trying to film something for the internet. Really? You know what, guys? Cut it. That's crazy. What? How am I supposed to work in these conditions? I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Peace.